Let's say that one day you decided to invest your crypto to earn some passive income. So you went to Uniswap and invested your tokens in a liquidity pool, and soon after that, you started earning some returns on your tokens, but after a while, you needed the money you invested and you cashed out your tokens from the pool. But when you tried to calculate the profits you made, you found out that it would have been better if you didn't invest in this pool, and you actually have missed on some profits you could have made if you simply held your tokens and didn't invest them. This is what is known as impermanent loss in the crypto space. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will know what is impermanent loss and how it actually happens, and finally, we will talk about different scenarios for impermanent loss, so grab a snack and let's get started. So, what is impermanent loss? Impermanent loss is simply the loss of profits you could have made if you held your tokens and didn't invest them in a liquidity pool. To help you understand what that means, let's go over an example. Let's say that you invested 2 Ethereum and 4,000 Tether tokens. The price of Ethereum was $2,000, meaning that the total worth of your tokens equal $8,000. Let's say that you left the tokens in the pool for 6 months and when you decided to cash out your tokens, the pool gave you 1.5 Ethereum and 4,700 Tether tokens, we will explain why you got less Ethereum and more Tether in a minute, but for now, let's say the price of Ethereum has jumped to $2,500. So now, your 1.5 Ethereum is worth $3,750 and you have another $4,750 in Tether tokens, making the total value of your tokens equal $8,500, which means that you made a profit of $500 from your initial $8,000 investment. But let's see what could have happened if you held your tokens and didn't invest them. The two Ethereum coins will be worth $5,000 at the new price and add to them the 4,000 Tether tokens and we get a total of $9,000, which means that you could have made $1,000 in profit. So as you can see in this case, you make an additional $500. This $500 you could have made is the impermanent loss. During these six months you may have earned returns on your tokens. Let's say that you earned $320. If you subtract them from the impermanent loss, you will get $180. Which means that you actually lost $180 by investing your tokens in this pool. To be able to understand why impermanent loss happens and why the pool gave you less Ethereum and more Tether tokens, there are three very important points you need to understand about liquidity pools. We actually have a detailed video about them, but for now let's go over these points very quickly. So as you may know, a liquidity pool is a pool containing two tokens and people come to it to swap their tokens. The tokens in this pool come from investors like you who want to earn some returns on their crypto, so for every swap made with your tokens you get 0.3% of the swap amount as profit. The first point you need to understand here is that the price of a token in a liquidity pool depends on the supply and demand of this token. For example, if we have a pool containing LINK tokens and Tether tokens and a lot of people want to buy LINK tokens, the pool will continuously raise its price, so it may sell the first token for $10, the second one for $11, and the third for $12. This is done to never run out of link tokens in the pool. What that means for us here is that a liquidity pool can have prices different from the prices of centralized exchanges like Coinbase and Binance. Just keep that in your mind. The next point we have here is that if you want to invest some tokens in a pool, you need to put in the two tokens, you can't deposit just one token and you also need the ratio between the two tokens to be 50-50. For example, if you have $10,000 to invest into this link tether pool, you need to put in $5,000 in tether tokens and $5,000 in link tokens, which may equal 500 link tokens. The third point and the most important one is that when you want to cash out your money, you cash out your portion or your percentage of the pool, not the same amounts of tokens you initially deposited. For example, if a pool has 9,000 LINK tokens and 90,000 Tether tokens, and then you deposited 1,000 LINK tokens and 10,000 Tether tokens, making a total of 10,000 LINK tokens and 100,000 Tether tokens, then you now own 10% of the pool. 
If at the time you want to cash out your money, a lot of people had bought LINK tokens from the pool, and now there are only 8,000 LINK tokens and 120,000 Tether tokens. Then you will get 10% of these tokens, which equals 800 LINK tokens and 12,000 Tether tokens, just like what happened in the example we explained at the beginning. If you have been enjoying the video so far, give us a like as a new channel, it really helps us. Now that you know these important points, let's now get to how impermanent loss happens and how to calculate it. So, impermanent loss happens only when the price of one or the two tokens in the pool change, the greater the change, the larger the impermanent loss. So, let's take an example. Let's say that you want to invest $2,000 in an Ethereum Tether pool. Currently, this pool has 18 Ethereum coins and 9,000 Tether tokens. Let's say the price of Ethereum is currently at $500. So, you put in 1,000 Tether tokens and 2 Ethereum, making the total in the pool 20 Ethereum and 10,000 Tether tokens, which means that now you own 10% of the pool. Let's say that after 6 months the price of Ethereum jumps to $650, as we have said before, the pool will still sell 1 Ethereum for $500. So, traders can see now that they can make an easy profit by buying the cheap Ethereum from your pool at $500, and then sell it to other exchanges at $650. Traders who do this are called arbitrage traders. As we have said before, the pool will begin to raise the price of Ethereum as this trader continues buying it, until the price reaches $650, and that is when no more profits can be made. By doing some calculations, we find out that the maximum amount of Ethereum this trader can buy before the price reaches 650 was 2.45 Ethereum, and by doing more calculations, we find out that this trader paid for them 1,402 Tether tokens. We will actually explain how to do these calculations at the end of the video, as they are a little complicated. But for now, this arbitrage trader can make a profit by selling this Ethereum at the current price of $650, making an easy profit of $190. Now, the pool has 17.55 Ethereum and 11,402 Tether tokens, we get those numbers by subtracting the 2.45 Ethereum from the initial 20 we had, and adding the 1,402 Tether tokens paid by the trader. Let's say that you want to cash out your money now, you own 10% of the pool, which means that the pool will give you 10% of the two available tokens, so you will get 1,140 Tether tokens and 1.755 Ethereum. Let's now see the value of these tokens. The 1.755 Ethereum multiplied by the new price of $650 will give us $1,140, add them to the other $1,140 we have in Tether tokens, and the result will be a total of $2,280. So you made a profit of $280. We will talk about the fees you earned in a minute, but let's now see what could have happened if you held your tokens and didn't invest them. First, you would still have the 1,000 Tether tokens which are equal to $1,000, and also, you would have the 2 Ethereum, which at the new prices are worth $1,300. Adding the two together, we get a total of $2,300. So you could have had $2,300 if you didn't invest your tokens in the pool. To calculate impermanent loss, we subtract 2,280 from 2,300 to get $20 which means that you could have had $20 more if you held your tokens. But still, this doesn't tell us the whole story, at the end of the day, you are investing to make profits. So, let's consider the returns you earned during these 6 months. You should know that all pools are different and each pool offers a different APY on your invested tokens. But let's say that the pool you invested in gives you a 12% APY, which is pretty achievable in many liquidity pools. You left your tokens for 6 months, which means that you earned 6% only on your tokens. So, 6% on the $2,000 you invested equals $120, which as you can see in this example, completely covers your impermanent loss and leaves you with an additional $100 in profit, compared to holding your tokens. You should also know that it is called impermanent loss because you don't actually take the loss until you actually cash out your tokens from the pool, that is when it becomes a permanent loss. But for example, if you didn't withdraw your tokens and waited until the price of Ethereum falls again close to the price you deposited at, the impermanent loss will be much lower, or it can disappear completely if you cash out when the price of Ethereum is at exactly 
Now, let's go see another example in which the price of Ethereum falls. Let's say that you invested the same $2,000 in the same pool with the same number of tokens. The current price of Ethereum is $500 and you own 10% of the pool. Let's say that after a while, the price of Ethereum dropped to $350. As we have said before, the pool will still have the old price of $500. So, an arbitrage trader can buy Ethereum at $350 from other exchanges and then sell it to the pool at $500. In this case, the pool will continuously lower the price it pays for each Ethereum coin. And, by doing some calculations, we find that the maximum amount of Ethereum the trader can sell to the pool at high prices is 3.9 Ethereum, any more than that, the pool will pay less than $350 and the trader will begin to lose money. This trader paid $1,365 for the Ethereum he sold to the pool, which you can get by multiplying 3.9 times 350. By doing some more calculations we find out that the pool paid 1,631.8 Tether tokens for the trader, which means that he made a profit of approximately $267. After what happened, the pool now has 23.9 Ethereum and 8,368.2 Tether tokens, you own 10% of the pool, so when you cash out your tokens, you will get 2.39 Ethereum and 836.8 Tether tokens. We can get the value of these tokens by multiplying 2.39 times 350, which will give us $836.5 and you also have another $836.8 in Tether, making a total of $1,673.3, which means that you took a loss of $326.7. To calculate your impermanent loss in this case, let's see what could have happened if you held your tokens. First you would still have the 1,000 Tether tokens, plus the 2 Ethereum which would have been worth $700, adding the 2 together gets us $1,700. So you still would have taken a loss of $300 from the initial $2,000. But you lost an additional $26.7 by investing in the pool, which is your impermanent loss. But still, if we assume that you earned the same $120 in returns from the pool, you will have a total of $1,793.3, which means that by investing in the pool, you reduced your loss by $93. As you can see, the fees can sometimes cover the impermanent loss, but that is not always the case. Pools with no stablecoins are much riskier than the Ethereum Tether pool we talked about. In pools with no stablecoins, the two tokens can move in price, and the impermanent loss in this case could easily exceed the returns earned from the pool. Let's see an example. Let's say that you want to invest $2,000 into an Ethereum mana pool. The price of Ethereum currently is $500 and the price of mana is $2, which means that the price of one Ethereum equals 250 mana tokens. So you deposited two Ethereum and 500 mana tokens and you now own 10% of the pool. After a while, the price of Ethereum rises to 750 and the price of mana falls to 50 cents. At that new price, 1 Ethereum is equal to 1,500 mana, but the pool still has the old price, so, the traders will do their arbitrage by buying the cheap Ethereum from the pool and selling it at a high price on other exchanges. By doing the same calculations, we find that after the arbitrage, the pool will have 8.16 Ethereum and 12,254 mana tokens. And, when you cash out, you will get your 10%, which equals 0.816 Ethereum and 1,225 mana tokens. At the new prices, these tokens are equal to $1,224.5. So you took a big loss of $775. But let's see what could have happened if you held the tokens. The two Ethereum are worth now $1,500 and the 500 mana are worth $250 making a total of $1,750. So in this case you also took a loss, but much smaller than the first case. Your impermanent loss here is $525.5 and this loss is very unlikely to be covered by the returns of the pool, even if you are getting a 20% APY and left the tokens for an entire year. As you can see from the previous example, impermanent loss is very large when the prices of the two tokens move in opposite directions. To make it easy for you, let's quickly go over the different scenarios that could happen in a liquidity pool. 
Let's start with the first case which is when the two tokens move in different directions. This is the worst case for any liquidity provider. For example, if a token rises in price by 50% and the other one drops by 7 to 5%, the liquidity provider will suffer an impermanent loss of 30%. The second case is when the two tokens move in the same direction with equal movements, or when you wait for the prices to return to the initial prices, this case is very unlikely to happen due to the volatility of cryptos. But if does happen, in this case, the impermanent loss will be zero or very close to zero. The third case we have is when the two tokens rise in price but with different percentages. For example, if one token rises in price 50% and the other one rises by 7 to 5%, the impermanent loss in this case will be very low at 0.3%. This is the best scenario you can hope for when investing in liquidity pools, as you will benefit from the price increase and you will not lose much to impermanent loss. The last case we have is when the prices of the two tokens fall but with different percentages. In this case, the impermanent loss will also be very small, but still larger than the previous case. For example, if the price of one token falls by 50% and the other token falls by 7 to 5%, then the impermanent loss in this case will be 5.72%. So, as we have said, the best scenario to hope for is that the prices of both tokens increase with close movements, or if that doesn't happen, then at least both prices move in the same direction with close movements. In the next part, we will explain how we got the numbers we used in the previous examples. So, these liquidity pools use a mathematical formula to determine prices. This formula is called the Automated Market Maker Formula. As you can see in an Ethereum Tether pool, the Z equals the number of Ethereum coins in the pool times the number of Tether tokens in the pool, which we can easily calculate to get 200,000. This Z is a constant number that doesn't change unless someone comes and invests more tokens in the pool. As we have said before, as the number of Ethereum coins in the pool decreases, the price of each Ethereum will increase. So, to get the number of Ethereum coins that need to remain in the pool for the price to reach 650, we use this formula. We take the square root of the Z divided by the new price, which will give us 17.5 Ethereum. So, when there are only 17.5 Ethereum coins, the pool will have a price of 650 Tether tokens per Ethereum. Buying any more from the pool will increase the price even more. So, the arbitrage traders can buy a maximum of 2.5 Ethereum from the pool. To find out how much Tether they pay to the pool, we return to the automated market maker formula. We have the Z and the new number of Ethereum, we can then easily find the new number of Tether tokens, which will be 11,401. So, the traders paid 1,401 Tether for the 2.5 Ethereum they bought from the pool. At the end of this video, we hope you learned what you need to know about impermanent loss and how it happens. And if you liked our video and want to reward our hard work, give it a thumbs up, Comment if you have any questions and subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.